Hello, this is Sian. Welcome to another video. Today we're doing another short story. We are doing another short story in the Clockwork Chronicles. In the mini novel, The Hero of Wonderbird, we are doing part two of the part three part story. And yeah, we left off on an interesting note. If you haven't read those other chapters, be sure you do so. Otherwise, you'll be missing out on some major spoilers and you'll probably be get, be very lost because that's normally what happens. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with the video, I suppose. <clears throat> Hopefully I fix that do not disturb problem. Part two, rescue, squishy. It felt like an eternity as Squishy sat in, in the office, knowing it wouldn't be easy to simply break through the walls like William had. The men would be expecting that, and no doubt she didn't want to anger them any more than she'd already had. She couldn't. She could hear faint conversations outside the door that led out into the hallway. However, she wasn't really focused on what the men were saying. There was a lot already on her mind as it was. She couldn't be sure how long she had been in that office. But she knew there had to be a way out of this. The door definitely wasn't made of iron, like the cells had been. But there was also still too many men to keep track of. She really didn't want to press her luck if she didn't have to. Still, she didn't want to stay here either. Especially if she could be out there stopping those men from hurting her friend. Stampy needed her right now. He needed all of them. There was no telling what was going on or what was happening to him. The men certainly wouldn't tell her any of that information. She let out a long sigh as she shook her head, pacing the office back and forth, not wanting to stay still for long, to risk the men barging in and getting suspicious of her. She could try to get up on the roof, where the redstone was, but she would risk breaking it, and that was the last thing she wanted to do. She was running out of options, and it was very frustrating. Suddenly, the duckling heard a bark beside her that caused her to jump and look down to see Barnaby. His deep intelligent brown eyes meeting hers. What are you doing here? She was quietly kneeling down as she was at, so she was at his level. The men see you. The dog growled gently, nudging her leg as if to tell her it would be alright. Confused, she had curious. She looked down at the dog and back towards the door, just as an explosion of a firework could be heard. Was that busy? What's going on out there? We're being attacked, a voice hollered. Just audible from the door as she heard doors slam open and feet running down the hallway. What is he doing? <laughs> she asked softly as Barnaby waltzed over to the door and noted at it. You sure safe? Dog looked back at her with an expression that dared not be questioned. She nodded and smiled, willing to trust the canine, especially if he was working with the others to get her out. What about Stampy? Was he out there somewhere? Or had he been taken out, out of the lovely world? Couldn't be too late to help him, could it? No, of course it wasn't too late. She knew it. She could feel it. She knew Barnaby could feel it, too. Squishy steadily walked over to the door and pushed it open, looking out into the empty hallways as she looked, one way, then the other. The sound of fireworks were fading away, growing more and more distant. Even the men's shouts were starting to fade, which, which gave her hope as she walked out of the office and out the front door. Squishy, a familiar voice called from her left, and she turned to see a young man walking up to her, his golden brown hair glittering slightly in it, and its deep blue eyes sparked with relief. Are you okay? Those men didn't hurt you? No, they didn't hurt me, but they threatened to if I tried to escape again. She pierced with a smile. A smile slowly. Stampy's not here, though. Whatever, ha whatever did happen, the boy asked. I know something was wrong as soon as Sissy came to find me. I didn't take long until we found William when we figured out what the two of you had been captured. She nodded slowly. Those men wanted something. Apparently they got it. It's... It's a long story. Tell me what happened, the boy said simply. She swallowed. Did Stampy ever tell you what was on the other side of that portal, Sam? The boy shook his head. No. He said he might tell me someday, 
if there was a need to, but there was no need to back then. I tell now, she said with a sigh. Those men forced Tempe to show them the portal that he had hidden away. A portal that leads to a place full of wonders and unimaginable things. Tempe's only been there a few times to help the residents there. And is he even considered a hero over there? Where does it lead to? The boy asked. A place called Wonderbird, she said with a sad smile. I've only been there once or twice. But I do know someone who could help us. Sam nodded slowly. Do you know where the portal is? When she shook her head again. No, he never showed me where it hit. he hid it. I'm sure one of the helpers probably know to, knows where it is, though. The boy nodded thoughtfully again. Squish, she looked down at the path, not seeing any of Mr. A's men inside. Not one of the helpers were around either. They seemed to be on their own. She turned to, She turned when Barnaby barked matter of factly, and an idea struck her. Maybe we don't need the helpers to take us to this portal. Barnaby can probably smell where they took him, she said excitedly. All right, then, lead the way, Barnaby, the boy said, and the dog obediently began trotting off toward the house, sniffing the air and the ground tirelessly. Just knowing the dog was there, knowing exactly where they needed to go, gave her hope. They still had a chance to stop those, these men. It helped Stampy in the only way she knew how to. She just hoped it wouldn't be too late. It didn't take long until they arrived at their destination. Squishy, finding herself standing next to the boy, as she looked up at the portal that lay before them. Wow, this isn't a normal portal, is it? The boy asked in wonder, and the duckling couldn't help but smile. It's not normal, she agreed. It's a magical portal that allows Stampy to visit Wonderberg any time he likes. That's nice of them to do that for him, the boy told her. He told me he wished for the portal to remain open, she said with a shrug. She shook her head sadly as she added. I hope he doesn't regret that decision now. I'm sure he doesn't, the boy replied. It gives us a chance to go after them. Help him. Yeah, she said with a smile. And she just took a step towards the portal before stopping and her track the thought struck her. Wait a minute. What is it? The boy asked. There's a chance that the portal might have some side effects. So Dickley told the boy. Mind taking my hand? Just guess. The boy smiled and nodded. Taking her outstretched hand as they walked through the portal with Barnaby shortly behind. They were instantly surrounded in with light as the duckling focused on the task at hand. She was also she was also ready to soft an impossible fall if they needed to if they indeed fell from the sky. No, she had to be thinking with much more of a cat thing, since after all, she could make sure they would glide safely safely to the ground. It was what she was good at, after all. It was handy having wings in the first place do something like that. Sure, she may not be able to fly, but that did not mean she didn't have other ways of getting to where she needed to be and doing what she needed to do when she needed to do it. It just meant they were one step closer to helping her friend. Getting him back from those awful men and stopping them from doing whatever they planned to do to Wonderberg or even wondering in the first place. Had to be that, right? What else could it be? She didn't know. But she would know soon. Let's check the time. Yeah, let's go on to the next one. And stay up, <laughs> Stampy felt the familiar sensation of falling. But he knew it wasn't just the portal making him feel that way. As the bright white light turned into crisp blue, as he heard the wind rushing in his ears, as he braced himself, he could hear the men screaming around him. But he kept his composure. He was used to this by now. <laughs> he could see the town beneath them as the ground wrenched up to meet them. Tempe held back a flinch. They landed on the ground, stumbling away from the men as they struggled to recover from what had happened. What? What was that? One of the men asked, pointing, panting as he tried to get back, breath back from the screaming so much. Well, you can't say I didn't try to warn you, the guy shrugged. I tend to find myself falling from the sky whenever I'm going through a por that portal. It's a cat thing, and it affects people I'm with as well. That would have been nice to know, the sick man said bitterly. So this is a place we've heard so much about? Yeah, the cat said quietly as he looked around the empty plaza. There wasn't a single person in sight. Perhaps one of those days where people were simply hanging out or spending time in their homes. He wished someone would out to 
notice what was happening. But would they really know what was going on? Cat turned around, looked behind him, up at the glittering wonder gem that was spinning effort around a large glass box. It amazed him just how it was doing so. Yes, how something like that could ensure the people of Wonderbird were always wondering. What are you looking at? One of the men asked, and he felt a hand on his shoulder. Daffy looked away from the gem, choosing not to answer the question as he sadly looked at the men. So, what are we going to do now that we're here? Well, Mr. A told us to take you somewhere until you were ready to arrive. Another man said, Billy. I guess I have to go back and tell him where it is. You two can handle him from here? Of course we can. The sick man said with a steer as someone grabbed him from behind. He's not going anywhere with my, my, without my knowledge. Step aside and shook his head, not really knowing what he should do. Part of him had wanted to make a run for it and try to escape the men, or even try to get to Keem's house. He knew it wouldn't work, though. Those men were too quick, too strong to give him a chance to help. Get help. He had no choice but to do what they said, not wanting to make anything worse for him or his friends. Well, we should get a move on then, the first man reported. Matter of factly, as the second man began to drag him down the path, the opposite direction from Keith's house, getting one last glimpse of the window gem before he disappeared into one of the houses, trapped with the men that had taken him out of his world, forcing him to show them where the port was. Now, he was stuck with these men, not knowing what they were going to do to him, not knowing what Anyway, that's going to be the end of that video. I hope you guys enjoyed a nice little two-part chapter thingy. It just means we have some shorter chapters. <laughs> which is fine. Which is fine. But yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I will see you in the next one. Whenever that might be. Goodbye.